right, so now we know what compassion is. The next step is understanding why it's important. What are the impacts of it? Well, compassion is a fascinating thing, and there's a lot of research out about it now. It actually has a tremendous amount of impacts on the being of the person. So even if we witness it, experience it, or apply it, it has psychological health benefits as well as physiological health benefits. So it can impact us in ways that allow us to reduce our stress. It's actually shown to reduce inflammation in the body. It's shown to create longevity of life. People are generally more happy that have compassion. They're generally less lonely and more involved with relationships. Compassion has so many impactors on life, our mental health, our physical health. It's not something we should underestimate. And if we think about all of these benefits of what compassion has to offer us, it just makes sense to not only have compassion ourselves for our own benefits, but again, what we model for our children, they will start doing it. So we help them build compassion at the same time, and it has a lot of benefits for them as well. Dr. Kelly McGonigal actually says that the unique quality of compassion is that its benefits extend to the one who offers it, the one who receives it, and all of those who witness compassion in action. Our brain, heart, and entire physiology are tuned to support us when we make the courageous decision to be compassionate. Let's reflect on that for just a moment. A courageous decision is to be compassionate. Why would it be courageous? Well, think about it for a moment. At our core, we want to connect with people. We want to engage. We're social beings. And so in order to be compassionate, we actually have to be vulnerable. Because when we apply our compassion, we might get shut down. And so it can be a scary thing. But the impacts, again, are so phenomenal and so big, it takes courage to go into that vulnerable state and to be compassionate. So compassion with parenting creates an environment for the child to more likely want to engage with us, want and feel our support, build trust between the child and the parent. And ultimately, it creates this environment where the child might more likely take action or do something about whatever is going on. It, it invites a space for them to feel safe to move forward. When we're going to try to Adopt compassion. There's some core building blocks that'll help you be successful. First off, we're going to recognize our parental agenda, our judgment, and or any other barriers that we might have. Let's talk about this for a moment. When we come to situations where compassion is needed, sometimes we have our own agenda or our judgments about the situation, thinking that they're a good kid or a bad kid. And when we do that, it actually stifles our compassion. We normally don't have empathy or compassion any longer. So we wanna be able to recognize any agenda we have, put that aside, recognize any judgments of what we think is right or wrong, good or bad, put that aside, and recognize any barriers. And we're gonna talk more about barriers in a moment, but recognize them and stop those. Secondly, we're going to be exploring the child's perspective and developing empathy. If you remember, it's very difficult to have compassion if we don't have empathy. So we have to be able to build that empathy. Normally, if you're not feeling empathy for the situation and your child, it means you might need to ask some more questions, open-ended questions, to get their perspective of what's going on, why they see the things that they see, what are they feeling. As we explore their perspective, if we're still not feeling that empathy, you might need to go back to step one. Because either your agenda, your judgments, or some of the barriers we're going to talk about are probably getting in the way of you being able to experience that empathy. Once we have that empathy, that's going to move us into step three. Step three is exploring child's best interest collaboratively 
if you don't know what it is. Sometimes we already know what it is. So for example, if you have a child that wants to play with fire, it's probably in their best interest not to be doing it on a carpet. However, sometimes we don't know what their best interest is. It might be with school or friends, and it's a little bit convoluted. And so we might have to ask some questions, some open-ended questions, to get a little bit more perspective of what is in their best interest. But once we have the empathy, we're moving to a space of what's in this person's best interest and how do we move forward. Okay, so just going over that one last time. First, we're recognizing any agendas, judgments, or barriers that we have. We're stopping that, putting it to the side because we all have them. Secondly, we're building the empathy. Thirdly, we're identifying what is in the best interest of the child. Those three steps are critical in developing compassion. After we have compassion, that's where we're going to start applying a lot of the things that we talk about in MI Lead. But just so you have an idea of what that looks like, what starts happening after we have that compassion is first off, we're gonna collaboratively identify options, solutions, if none have been presented. So the child might already have an option or solution and they might bring it up. And if so, we're going to support that. If there hasn't been any brought up, we might talk about some of the options and solutions to resolve what's going on. Secondly, we're going to support and help them with a plan to implement whatever options or solutions they came up. So we're gonna do some guiding here and figure out how do we actually make something happen. Third thing to keep in mind is you don't have to have the answer. You don't have to have the solution. It's okay sometimes to be a parent and say, you know, I'm not too sure. Let's think about this and take some time on it. Take a walk, take some time, take a night. Be thinking about it and come back with the solution later. We don't have to have the answers right then and there. If you feel like you have to have the answer right then and there, this could make you feel pressured and you might make decisions you regret. 